Oh man, <laughs> the sound of money right there. All right, guys, Kettle Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack. This is my reloading bench. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about reloading and how to get into it and things like that. Um, right now, probably not a good time to get into reloading because their components are just as hard to get right now as ammunition. But if you're able to get into it, I say there's never, <laughs> there's no time like the present. Uh, as far as showing you guys about reloading, that's, that's like a 20-part a series. Uh, of how and why and what and when and where. There are a couple really good YouTube channels out there that I could recommend, Gavin Tube, uh, as well as Johnny's Reloading Bench. I don't know if those guys get so much into pistol reloading as they do into precision rifle reloading, uh, but there's a couple really good channels out there. Now, what do I know? I know enough to get in trouble. Uh, and how did I get into it? Well, I got into reloading because just about everybody that I hung out with, they were reloaders. Uh, I think TR Prepper, Trees of Below It, Pops Quest, uh, Val, uh, Bald and Curious. Who else? Oh, Dirt Road. He kind of asked me the question one day, what's, what's, well, how much money can you actually save doing this stuff? And next thing you know, I've never seen anybody that just jumped so deep into reloading. It is an addiction. And uh, if you ask my good friend SoCal, he will, uh, he'll, he'll tell you, yeah, it is, man. You can put some serious money into it. But what I want to do today, I want to kind of give you a brief uh, rundown on the history of where I started and where I am now. Now, primarily, uh, I do two or three different types of reloading. Uh, we're getting ready to get into the six millimeter arc. Not for a bolt gun, but for a gas gun. It's a little bit different, okay? Uh, there's a tremendous amount of difference when you start getting into reloading for a bolt gun and more precision stuff. Now, I reload for gas gun, 223, 556, uh, 65 Creedmoor, and the six millimeter arc is getting ready to come up. Um, most of what you see here is set up for pistol. Um, of course, the famous uh, 650 Dillon right here. Uh, I have successfully destroyed uh, this one several times. <laughs> and my good friend X-Ring actually came down here to fix it. But let's talk about the chronograph of everything. How did it all start out? Well, I'll tell you what, this guy right here. Uh, this is the Lee Precision uh, single stage, classic, I, I guess it is. But it, it uses um, these really cool little uh, drop-in lug type deal things. So this is a very good place to start out. I always tell people, you don't necessarily have to start out with all this stuff, but I, I will tell you, once you buy something, even a single stage press, the way it sits right here, I use it every time I reload for uh, rifle cartridges, uh, simply because I use it for so resizing, uh, decapping, uh, also trimming and deburring with the uh, the, the uh, whatever you call this thing, the quick trim die. And uh, actually I'm waiting for the die for the six millimeter arc. It's supposed to have come out last week, but they're still having some issues with it, I guess. But I started out with a single stage press because one, I was able to take my time. I was able to learn the basics, the reasons, the whys, the hows. And I'll show you something interesting. I probably have shown this in the past. Uh, this is my very first Lyman reloading handbook. And in the front of it, it says, don't blow yourself up, Pops Quest. And he handed this to me one day, and it's always been something that I would treasure. Um, also, uh, and I know we're jumping around, but uh, another good item to keep with you is, where are you at? I know it's in here somewhere. Ah, a, a good data book. So a reloading data book given to me by Live for Wild. Right there, man. He sent this to me. It was pretty cool. But uh, the the cool thing also about getting into reloading is if you have a bunch of friends who are also into reloading, you got a tremendous amount of resources, people to reach out to. What's your dope? What's your what's your load for this? What's your load for that? They can help you overall length. Uh, when I was reloading for the uh, the Shadow Two. Uh, CZs, they like a shorter overall length. When you're reloading for, let me see, something like this 2011 here, okay, these have a little bit higher tolerance for 
say case gauging or bullets. And as we're going to talk about this guy a little later on, this is the Arminoff. Uh, this is the case gauge box. And these are really, really cool, especially if you're into reloading for uh, 2011s where you really got to know uh, your cases are absolutely perfect, especially in competition, because you don't want something to get stuck. So, all right, back. I digress. Let's talk about this, the single stage. With the single stage, you will be able to take each one of your cases, and you'll be able to reload that case, de resize, deprime, set them over there. Then you can go back and you can prime each case individually. Then you're going to charge each case individually, and then you're going to seek the bullet, and then you're going to do the crimp. Each one of those will happen one stroke at a time. Where you have a single stage, you're going to learn the basics, but it's going to take you a while to get there. Now, my next step up was something like this. This is the Lee Precision Turret, classic turret press. This thing is this thing's pretty cool. And the reason it's pretty cool is I use this uh, quite often, still today. Like uh, when I was sh had the uh, shoot that uh, the bull uh, radical. I had to shoot it in 40 cal. So what happens? I had to go out and buy some 40 caliber dies, had to get some bullets, had to figure out how to seat it. You've got a bullet uh, powder charge right here. But what happens is, is every time you go up, you're, you're increasing that step with mechanics. So we go and we deprime, resize, prime, seat the primer, charge, come back down, seat the bullet, and do the, uh, what do you call it, crimping, and you're done. Uh, I think I got, I did a race on, on the phone with my good friend Rick, Is Your Six Covered. Uh, he was using a Dillon 650, and I was using this, and I think he was loading four bullets to my one with this guy. So, yeah, this, this is a lot slower than the full-blown progressives, uh, but a lot faster than a single stage right there. Now, here's another cool part is I like this because... I can pull that whole thing off of there, just like that. And then when I'm reloading and I want to load up for 223, all I got to do is drop this guy in like that. Turn that thing a little bit. Get it. Well, it's a little bit more entailed because this has got this has got the cam up inside of that thing. There it is. And now I can reload 223. Of course, you have to deprime separately. Uh, then you've got to chamfer, resize, trim, do all the other stuff. But the cool part is, is if I'm reloading for just rounds that I'm going to shoot for close distance, uh, I've got, say right here, here's uh, 2,000 bullets. I've got plenty of primers and I've got plenty of powder. So if I need to run about 200 bullets for a competition, for close in, I mean out to 300 yards, I can do it all day long with this thing. It'll probably take me about an hour, but I'll have 200 rounds when I'm done. Okay, so we used to load 45 ACP. As a matter of fact, I've got all the tools and everything up there. Uh, 223, nine millimeter and 40 cal with this guy right here. A lot of fun. All right, so then we get over here. We're talking about the Dillon. Uh, this thing is incredible. And I would say maybe if you wanted to invest, you go from a single stage, you learn the basics because you can always use that single stage press. You can always use it and jump over here to this guy right here, Dillon 650. Uh, now I think it's there are 750s, but as you can see, I can just, well, ah, get a little one stuck up in here while we're doing a video, of course. I could sit here and just run them just like this. Always make sure you observe each one of your cases for powder. I would say of all the things I've ever learned, that is probably the most important process. But anyway, you, you have a, a case feeder up top, powder charge here. You are de resizing, depriming, uh, priming, putting the chowder powder on it. Let me get over here. And then uh, seat the bullet and put the crimp on it. Very simple, very easy. Now, you could probably load at an easy pace uh, of at least five or 600 rounds an hour with this guy. Uh, and as long as you've got the components, and again, now it's hard to come up with those components, but I've got a few primers up here and some bullets and things like that. Um, then 
the next step, once I got into like 6.5 Creedmoor, a lot larger stuff to where I'm going to use this guy right here to prep all of my brass. I'm also going to use this guy right here. Now this is a Lyman single stage turret press. And this is pretty cool because I've got it set up with everything. This is 6.5 Creedmoor right here. You turn it like this. This guy can come over here. I got 223 over here. And then, uh, what in the world have I got over here? I believe, yeah, that's a 6.5 Creedmoor over here also. Um, now, we are getting ready to introduce, because like I said, uh, this is the RCBS. These are the, uh, the uh, nice thing about these. These are for 6 millimeter arc. You've got a uh, depriming, resizing, but then also this is a bullet seat plus a, a crimp. So you get the factory crimp on those. So it kind of eliminates a full step in there. I'm interested in seeing how that works, but these are specifically set up for uh, gas guns or AR platform. All right, um, so when you're looking to do something a little bit more precise, you, uh, actually I know a lot of guys with um, the uh, bolt guns, they use nothing but a single stage through the whole process, which is cool. Uh, but nine millimeter, 40 cal, 45, uh, depending on what you're shooting, this is the way to go. And if you're shooting a lot, the only way to go. Uh, like I said, this is a great step. If you're not wanting to uh, invest this type of money, I think the whole setup, this is like $600 for the press and you got another $100 or $200 for maybe $200 for the case feeder. So you're about $800 into the whole thing, plus the, the dies, but you're going to have those dies. So anyway, single stage turret, uh, progressive, and then this is a single stage turret here. So that's it. Um, I guess what we could do is do a next part series. I'm going to get to it. Uh, showing you how to run a uh, single stage. But I think I've already got a video well, showing you how to do this. It's pretty fun. And I think that's the, no, there's nothing more satisfying than just sitting down. And I will never forget the first day that I shot my first bullet successfully. But I also won't forget the first day that I shot my first squib load, and then I won't forget the first day when I blew the top end of a gun out uh, in a competition. Go over to Is Your Six Covered to see video of that actually happening. But yeah, man, um, if you do it right, you follow the rules, you should be just fine. But it, it does. It does help you down the road when you are can't find any ammunition. Well, guess what? I walk out to my shop, there's my 650, and we bang out two or 300 rounds and uh, get ready for a really cool uh, three gun. So anyway, with that being said, guys, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate in leaving them down below. And it's a long, it was a long video. It was a fun video. I enjoy these kind. Uh, on occasion, we got to break away from all the BS that's going in the world today. It's crazy. Let's go to Boy 32. Always end them like this. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. This freedom is not free. I'm out of here. Y'all be good. Oh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Subscribe. That's it. Y'all be good.